Welcome back friends and welcome into the office. Um, I recently did a poll on the YouTube community tab and um, I asked the question of you know what would people like to see more of and um, one of the overwhelming winners was uh, regarding tech and um, tech related stuff to do with what we're doing here living in the middle of nowhere. So um, this winter, what I thought I would do is embark on something I've been wanting to do pretty much since we got here, and that was building a system to monitor stuff and to control and automate some bits and pieces around the homestead. Um, so this video um, will be quite conceptual um, rather than practical, but I'm pretty sure that everything I'm going to talk about um, is doable because I've already done the research. So let's go over the basics of what I have or what we have here and what I'd like to do and achieve with this project um, and get in place ready for spring next year. I mean outside you know the temperature well today's not too bad it's about minus one but it, we've had minus 15 and there's about 30 centimeters of snow on the ground likelihood is we'll get snowed in. Um, so it's a great time uh, to get on with these kind of things where we've got this downtime right through to March April next year. I don't expect to get everything done this winter um, but I would like to get quite a, you know a large chunk of it and then what I can do is um, add on stuff um, as time allows uh, through next year and and so on uh, so what I've got here is a little Raspberry Pi um, if you've not heard of this before it's not something I've baked in the kitchen it's a little computer in this box and um, they're famous uh, for doing these kind of projects and you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with it and it can um, act as the brains and do stuff with all the data that we get and do all the control systems and it's wi-fi enabled and it's got ethernet connection as well so you can see i've got it plugged in at the moment um here we've got a load of sensors and micro controllers which will do all the stuff outside and maybe some indoors that's all the electronics and other development stuff down here now before we get ahead of ourselves as I nearly did then um, what is it I would like to do um, so there's two main groups of actions as I've just sort of said one is monitoring collecting data and that kind of stuff and the other big group is controlling and automating things and often um, the control part needs the first part the data part so that's the monitoring will come first so let's look at what I'd like to do um, and to monitor in this video and then in the next video I'll look at what we might want to control. So um, first of all the obvious one is weather. Uh, we sometimes joke about us being in a microclimate here. We've seen it when it's been raining here um, but in the village just a few kilometers away it was bright sunshine so it'd be great to take weather data uh, from uh, within our own context here on the homestead. And then at some point down the line, I could use that for other clever stuff. So I'd like to monitor outside ambient temperatures, wind data, rainfall, and also air pressure. So for other stuff, it might be helpful to take a look at a map of our property um, to get an overview of what's going on and what needs monitoring. So here we are. Um, it looks cluttered, doesn't it? Um, but it's a real view of what we have going on. I'll briefly go over what's here and then remove what we don't need to make it easier to see and then look at what we could do with monitoring, if only to enable some control at a later date. So uh, main buildings are in red. Um, there's the house and, and the barns. And then um, flower beds are in green. Um, anything that's kind of orangey green is a fruit area. Anything that's in light brown, like these beds here, are um, vegetable beds and will give us produce. And there's the main garden up here that you know from seeing other videos and um, our orchard. And the green dots are walkways where we commonly walk around the property. And, you know, we can see where here's the park area with trees and these darker green areas around are areas where we need to strim. To collect biomass and this kind of is our main living area here i mean for permaculture people i guess you call this zone one um 
obviously we've got our greenhouses down here as well um, and you can see that I've already placed where the new uh, passive solar greenhouse is going to go so that's kind of yeah a basic overview of what we've got going on here right so um, let's remove some of this um, to make it a bit clearer so let's remove the trees some shrubs some flower beds and walkways and then finally some textures now one of our most precious resources is water and so I'd like to be able to monitor that and there's bags of potential for controlling how water flows about the property. Now water we drink comes from our well and that kind of looks after itself and only very rarely have we had to use it to top up water for garden use. Water for watering is collected from rainfall and is gathered into barrels on the corners of our property. From there it's pumped manually with a pump and hose pipe to one of the two IBC totes that we have, one by the greenhouse and the other over by the main vegetable garden. Now whilst not the subject of this video, this is an area that needs some thought and upgrading in order to better capture, store and distribute rainwater. These IBCs each store a thousand litres. As an aside we hope to double up on these and when all the barrels are full they store in total combined 1,900 litres, something like that. And so we have the capacity to store nearly 4,000 litres on site. It will be great to monitor what's inside the IBC tanks at any given moment. Now, regardless of the weather, we will always need to water the greenhouses. And that usually means that much more water is needed down by the greenhouses than up on the field. Last year I installed a basic drip tape system into both greenhouses to help us use the water more effectively. Monitoring barrel levels right now is probably a step too far, but it's doable if needed. I also want to know the temperature inside the two greenhouses. Knowing what it goes down to at night when we're asleep would be really useful, as well as comparing that to external temperatures. For ventilation control purposes, we need to know how high the temperature is. In addition, and for watering purposes, knowing the soil moisture levels of the respective greenhouses can help us more accurately water them and use water more effectively. So I would like to monitor that as well. So I think that's probably enough for now. But once we start adding in control and automation, then that for sure will need some more monitoring of things like ventilation and automated greenhouse watering, etc. But that's for another video. I hope you found this interesting. And if you did, help me reach more people by hitting that like button and do subscribe and share our stuff on social media. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we'll talk about automation and control and I'll bring you up to speed with um, how far I've got with um, building some of these sensors and uh, microprocessors etc. Bye for now.